Good morning, sir. Good morning, classmates. We are group 2 and today we are going to discuss about adjectives. Its types, position, properties, comparison, numeral, and the article. But before we start, please allow me to introduce first myself. My name is Kim Piharana and my co-members are Charles Paderes, Julian Sullivan, and Eileen Villar. Adjectives. An adjective describes or modifies nouns and pronouns in a sentence. It normally indicates quality, size, shape, duration, feelings, contents, and more about a noun or a pronoun. So, pag sinabi natin adjectives, ito yung mga words na nagdi-describe dun sa ating noun at saka sa pronoun. Ito yung nagbibigay sa atin ng information about dun sa people, things, ideas about nouns or pronouns. Ayan, so may picture kami. Ano masasabi nyo sa picture na yan? So, pwede nyo sabihin na beautiful, white sand, cool place. So, those words na magdi-describe sa place na yan, uh, masasabi po natin na adjective po siya. Adjectives usually provides relevant information about the noun, pronouns, they modify or describe. Answering the question, what kind, how many, which one and how much like for example the team has a dangerous batsman so in that sentence dangerous is our adjective because it described uh, it answered the question what kind of batsman has the team another one is i have 10 kings in my pocket so, dito naman, um, nag answer siya ng question na how many. And the next one is, I love that red car. In this sentence naman, nag uh, answer siya ng question, which one? And the last, I earned more money than he does. So, yun naman, nag uh, nag answer naman siya ng question, how much? So, merong types of adjectives. There are nine types of adjectives. Number one is descriptive adjectives, the quantitative adjectives, proper adjectives, demonstrative adjectives, possessive adjectives, interrogative adjectives, and definite adjectives, the articles, and compound adjectives. So let's go first to the descriptive adjectives. When we say descriptive adjectives, is this this is a word which describes a noun and pronoun. Most of the adjectives belong in this type. These adjectives provide information and attribute to the nouns or pronoun they modified or described. Descriptive adjectives are also called qualitative property. So, pag sinabi ng descriptive from the word itself, nagdi-describe siya dun sa adjectives. Dini-describe po ng adjective natin kung ano po yung noun or pronoun. Like for example, it's I have a fast car. So the word here is, uh, the adjective here is fast because yung fast, nagde-describe siya dun sa car. And the next is I am hungry. Hungry is our adjective kasi yun yung describe na you are hungry. The next one is quantitative adjectives. When we say quantitative adjectives, it provides the information about the quantity of the nouns or a pronoun. This type belongs to the question category of how much and how many. So, so quantitative naman, ito naman nagpo-provide naman siya ng information about sa bilang ng ating noun or pronoun. Like for example, is I have 20 bucks in my wallet. So, yung 20 there is our adjectives because it, um, it provides us information Kung ilan po yung box na meron siya sa wallet. The next one is, they have three children. Three there is our adjectives. Adjective because it, um, it gives us information kung ilan po yung children na meron siya. The next one, you should have completed the whole task. So yung whole gen is our adjectives. The next one is proper adjectives. Um, proper adjectives... There are adjectives form of proper noun. When proper nouns modify or describe other noun or pronouns, they become proper adjectives. 
So, proper means specific rather than formal or polite. So, dito man sa proper adjectives, um, nagmamodify siya or nagde-describe sa noun ng specific rather than uh, formal or polite. Like, for example, is the American cars are very strong. So, hindi po niya sinasabi yung brand ng car na sa Amerika. So, rather, sinabi niya na American cars. So, yung ating adjectives, yung proper adjectives si American. Kasi yun yung nagmamodify or nagde-describe ng ating noun or noun na cars. The next one is Chinese people are hard workers. So, Chinese there is our adjective kasi yun yung nagde-describe kung anong klaseng tao yung mga hard workers. And the next one is I love KFC burger. So, hindi niya sinabi kung anong klaseng burger siya basta KFC burgers. So, meaning specific po talaga The next one is demonstrative adjectives. When we say demonstrative adjectives, a demonstrative adjective directly refers to a something or someone. Demonstrative adjectives include the word this, that, this, and those. So, for example, ng demonstrative adjectives ay yung, that building is so dangerous, gorgeously decorated. So, our demonstrative adjective is yung that. Because yung that refers to a singular noun far from the speaker. And the next one is this car is mine. So yung this, nagre-refer din to a singular noun close to the speaker. The next one is the possessive adjectives. A possessive adjective indicates position or ownership. It suggests the belongingness of something to someone or something. Some of the most, so yung mo, pwede natin example sa possessives are um, my, his, her, our, their, your. Like for example, my car is parked outside. So, my is our possessive adjectives kasi siya yung nag indicate ng ownership his cat is very cute and our job is almost done so all of that adjectives ng possessive ay comes before a noun makikita nyo po siya it comes after a noun my tapos car yung car is our noun The next one is interrogative adjectives. Pag sinabi namang interrogative adjectives, uh, it asks a question. An interrogative adjective must be followed by a noun or a pronoun. This inter the interrogative adjectives are which, what, and whose. These words will not be considered as adjective if a noun does not follow right after them. Whose also belong to these possessive adjective types. So, like for example, which phone do you use? Which is our interrogative adjectives. And matikikita niyo po siya, sinusundan po agad siya ng ating noun. The next one is, what game do you want to play? And whose car is this? The next one is the indefinite adjectives. It describe or modify an unknown unspecifically. They provide indefinite or unspecific information about the noun. The common indefinite adjectives are few, many, much, most, all, any, each, every, either, nobody, several, some, etc. So, sa indefinite naman siya, nagde-describe siya, unspecific. So, walang unspecific information po siya. Like for example, I gave some candies to her. Some. So, walang bilang. Wala siyang specific na bilang. I want a few moment alone. Our adjective is a few. Several writer wrote about the recent the, re the recent incidents. Several is our adjectives. 
The next one is the articles. Articles also modify the nouns. So article are also adjectives. Articles determine the specification of a noun. A or A and an are used to refer to an unspecific noun and the is used to refer to a specific noun. Like for example, a cat is always afraid of water. Here, the noun cat refers to any cat, not specific. The other example is the cat is afraid of me. This cat is a specific cat. Kasi tinutukoy mo siya. Kaya specific siya. And there was, an electronic product should always be handled with care. So, wala rin siyang specific. Uh, actually, articles will be mo, uh, elaborated more later ng co-members ko. Compound adjectives. When compound noun or com Compound nouns combined words modify other nouns, they become compound adjective. This type of adjective usually combined more than one word into a single lexical unit and modify a noun. They are often separated by a hyphen or joined together by a quotation mark. So like for example here, I have a broken down sofa. Broken down is our adjectives, our compound adjectives here. It describes the sofa the noun. So, hyphen. Huwag kayong makonfuse sa hyphen at saka dun sa dash. Pag sinabing hyphen, walang space in between the words and the uh, hyphen. Why dash? Uh, may space in between the words and before the words. And the other example is I have a six foot long snake. Yung six foot long is our compound adjective because it described the snake. He gave me an I'm gonna kill you now look. The next one is the degree of adjectives. There are three degrees of adjectives. The positive, the comparative, and the superlative. These degrees are applicable only at the descriptive adjectives. Like for example, our positive degrees. He is a good boy. Comparative degree he is a better than any other boy. And our superlative, he is the best boy. So our adjectives here is good for the positive degree. And when you are comparing one to another one, uh, it's comparative degree, maging better na siya. And when it becomes superlative, the good will become best. Uh, but that degree of adjectives also will be elaborated more by my co-member later. Uh, next reporter is Charles Baderes. Position of adjective. Adjectives usually go before the noun they modify. For example, she is a nice girl. Here the adjectives nice modifies the, the noun girl and goes before it. Another examples, he is an intelligent boy. That was a clever idea. So, as we can see, the adjectives placed before the noun when two or more adjectives come before a noun they are usually separated by commas for example a large round table a short fair pretty girl so kapag two or more adjectives before the noun so we put comma on those two adjectives but take note that we do not put comma after the last adjective in the series. Kasi, for example, dito sa a short, fair, pretty girl. We do not need to put comma in the word pretty. Because the next word is a noun. So, hindi na siya tugma. When the last two are adjectives of color, they are usually separated by end. A black and white cow, not black, white cow. Red and blue socks. Kasi, so, we need to put end para malaman natin na dalawa yung kulay na ginamit. Kasi, if we, if we do not put end, so, it may consider as only one color. For example, a black-white. ba? So, 
Pwede siyang gray, ganun. Red, blue, socks. So, pwedeng halo yung kulay niya mix. Hindi siya two colors. When two or more adjectives come in the predicative position, we use and between the last two. For example, it was hot and sultry. The boy was handsome, smart, and polite. The clouds look white and floppy. So, kung kanina, kung yung adjectives, yung, kung yung two or more adjectives before the noun, we put kama, pero kapag ka after the noun naman siya, we put end to those adjectives. Sometimes, we put an adjective after the noun for the sake of emphasis. For example, they live an old man strong and wicked. So, mas nakapagbigay, mas nabigyan natin ng diin yung noun na old man, mas na-describe natin siya. More empathetic than they live a strong and wicked old man. In phrases such as those given below, the adjective always comes after the noun. For example, time immemorial, her apparent, God Almighty. In length of poetry too, the adjectives is sometimes put after the noun. For example, oh men with sisters dear, instead of oh men with your sisters. So, nag-iiba din yung expression natin dun kung paano natin siya binabasa. Characteristics of adjectives. Adjectives typically describe the properties of an entity referred to by the noun. An adjective opens a new window may describe inherent properties of the entity. For example, its color, size, weight, age, or quality. The following are the characteristics of adjectives. First is, adjectives are stackable, means that they can occur in a string. They can occur one another. This is known as stacking. Stacking is similar to word arrangement. However, stacking adjectives successively beyond three is a rarity. So when adjectives are more than three and it is stuck, it is uncommon but possible to happen. Thus, it is essential to note that adjectives are usually stuck in a, in a preferred order. For example, an, an ugly old yellow tin bucket stood beside the stove. In this sentence, the adjective sequence begin with an adjective of subjective judgment or evaluation then it is followed by an adjective of measurement next an adjective of color and finally a noun acting as an adjective that describes the material out of which the head down is made number two adjectives are gradable a number of adjectives are gradable they can express degrees of a property. Most readable adjectives have comparative and superlative forms. So comparative is comparing differences between the two objects. We add ER to the adjective when comparing. In superlative, describe an object which is at the upper or lower quality and use in sentences where a subject is compared to a group or objects. We add EST to the adjective when it is superlative and while well, a number of others use the adverbs more and most to express varying degrees the word live become livelier in comparative and liveliest in superlative in expressing varying degrees in comparative it become more livelier and in superlative it will become most livelier same as the word private and good Negative gradability. By putting less and least, we create a comparative and superlative forms. For example, in comparative form, the result was less successful than anticipated. The result was compared to anticipated. That shows negative gradability. In superlative form, his third campaign was the least successful of all his attempts. Says that his third campaign was compared to the first and second campaign. So by comparing it to overall of his campaigns, this is the least successful. Readability of absolute adjectives. The large majority of adjectives, such as absolute, complete, correct, essential, impossible, 
perfect, pregnant, ultimate, and unique have been called absolute adjectives because their meaning is supposedly not gradable as they express a quality that cannot be increased or decreased. In short, with a meaning that is generally not capable of being intensified or compared, incomparable, ultimate, or absolute modifier. Example, using the adjective unique as a case study, it means one of a kind. Hence, it seems but illogical and incorrect to say, for example, that painting is very someone unique. So, we do not need to put very or someone before the adjective unique because unique is already a absolute modifier. Another example is of the top 10 pros. He has the most complete game. Same as example number one. Readability of participial adjectives. Most adjectives are derived from present or past participle of verbs. For example, the adjectives interesting and bored used in the sentences below are formed from the present participle of the verb interest and past participle of the verb bore, respectively. In English, this is known as participial adjectives. So, the participial adjectives are a major subclass of adjectives. They can be distinguished by their endings, usually either ed or ing. They are called participial adjectives because they have the same endings as verb participles. For example, that was really an interesting lecture and he was wearing a bored expression on his face. A number of the frequently used adjectives derived from present participle of verbs include amazing, boring, corresponding, encouraging, exciting, existing, following, increasing, interesting, leading, missing, outstanding, promising, remaining, threatening, underlying, reading, and working. Participial adjectives like most adjectives have comparative and superlative forms only with more and most and with less and least. Not na naturally, they cannot add ER and EST as shown below. For example, number one, that was the most amazing performance I ever seen. Not that was the amazing guest performance I ever seen because it seems incorrect to say. Lastly, adjectives are modifiable. The final characteristics of adjectives is that they can be modified by adverbs. An adverb that can modify the adjective is adverb that is ended by ly. For example, these shrimps are unusually large. The adverb is unusually and the adjective is large. Hi, I'm Julian Sullivan and I'm going to report the numeral adjectives and the articles. So first, the numeral adjectives. Numeral adjectives are those adjectives which are used to denote the number of noun or the order in which they stand. From the word itself, numeral, so it deals with number and tells us about how many, how much, or, or in what order the noun is. Numeral adjectives can be divided into three types. They are definite numeral adjective, indefinite numeral adjective, and distributive numeral adjective. First, the definite numeral adjectives are the set of cardinals and ordinal numbers. The word definite itself tells us that this adjective has exact number of people or things. Definite numeral adjectives give us an exact or a specific number. And definite numeral adjectives use cardinal and ordinal numbers. So cardinal numbers are numbers used in an amount, while ordinal numbers are numbers used as an order. Here are some examples of cardinal and ordinal numbers. So, one in cardinal numbers, in ordinal numbers, it is first, 
two second three third five fifth ten ten thirteen thirteen examples of using definite numeral adjective michelle is the second girl in our class there are eight oranges in the bowl and he is going to sell his two cars as you can see in these examples it gives an ex exact and a specific number in definite numeral adjectives Unlike definite numeral adjectives, it only gives tentative numeral idea of the noun. It is used to specify numerous subjects, but they do not give any specific count value. They only provide information about the amount of noun, but do not tell the exact amount of noun in the sentence. Indefinite numeral adjectives are few, all, several, some, many, and most. Examples of indefinite numeral adjective. There are few bottles of wine in the fridge. He has sold all the books and several men came looking for you. As we can see, it only gives information about the amount of the noun, but they do not tell the exact amount or value. Distributive numeral adjectives are same as distributive adjectives. Distributive numeral adjectives denote singular number of noun among many. Distributive numeral adjectives are always followed by a singular noun and a verb. Distributive numeral adjectives are each, every, either and neither distributive numeral adjectives refer to individual noun within the whole amount so here are some example everything he said is true each student is responsible for for lit littering classroom either of the ways is correct dito hindi na niya inisa-isa inis kundi pinag-isa na lang it is referred to re to member of a group as individuals. So let's go to article of adjectives. Article means used to modify the nouns. There are three articles, a, an, and the. The versus a or an. The, the two articles, the and a, are not interchangeable. They each have a specific situation where they must be used. Not interchangeable means hindi mapagpapalit and this article are used depend on the specific situation. Use the when you want to specify one specific noun out of all the same nouns. So for example, the girl jump out the low window onto the rose bush. The three does specify one particular girl, one particular window, and one particular rose bush out of all the girls' windows and rose bushes. The is called a definite article because the subject it is referring to is a definite and specific noun out of all the same nouns. Use a when you are not specifying a particular noun. For example, a cat is stuck up in a tree. So in this sentence, we are not talking about any particular cat or any particular tree. We are just talking about some cat stuck up in some tree. So the article a or an is used with nouns that are not specific. A or noun is called an indefinite article. Because the subject it is referring to is an indefinite, not a specific noun. Let's go to a versus an. An. The article a and an are actually two forms of the same article. However, we have two different forms of this article because each form is used in a different situation. The rules for using the correct forms 
of the article. Use A when the first sound heard after the article is a consonant. For example, a car, a beetle, a dinosaur, a pair of scissors, a zebra. As we can see, the word we are using after the article is begin with consonant letter. So, use an when the first sound heard after the article is a vowel. For example, an alpine butterfly, an eatery, an igloo, an octopus, an umbrella. So, as we can see in this example, we use an because the word after the article is a vowel. Sometimes, even though the word following the article may start with a consonant, you may need to use the article an if the first sound heard is that of a vowel. Similarly, sometimes you may have to use the article a because a word that starts with a vowel if the first sound heard is that of a consonant. For example, it is an honor to meet you. And I don't think I will ever see a unicorn. In the first example, the article an is used because in the word honor, the H is silent. So O is a vowel and it is the first sound heard. In the second example, the article A is used because the U in the unicorn has the sound of the consonant Y as in yell. Remember that this rule is based of the first sound heard after the article, not the first sound of the noun. If there is another word between the article and the noun, then the article will be based on the first sound of the word in between, not the noun. So, for example, a lazy alligator, a nice eatery, a very cold igloo, a giant octopus, a heavy andre umbrella. Even though the first sound of the noun in the example are those of vowels, the first sound after the article are those of consonant. So the article A is used and not an. Paano naman kapag opposite? Example, an artistic person, an enthusiastic teacher, a impatient boy, an occupied doctor, an underfed pet. Even though the first sound of the noun in the example are those of consonant, the first sound after the article are those of vowels. So, here, article an is used, not a. In this case, we are going to base on the word between the article, not the between the article and the noun, not on the noun. So that's all, and thank you for listening. The next reporter is Eileen Villar. My topic is all about comparison. So what is comparison? Comparison is the act of finding out the differences and similarities between two or more people or things. There are three kinds of comparison, the equal comparison, comparative, and superlative. Equal comparison is used to compare that two things share equality in the same amount. Usually the form of sentence use as adjective or adverb as. For example, our boss is as friendly as yours. Another example, he worked as efficiently as you. As you can see here in our example, the measure of compared is similar. The second kind of comparison is comparative. Comparative is used to compare two things usefully in combination with them. Example, my sister is taller than me, so my sister is compared to me. Another example, my house is larger than hers, so my house is compared to her house. As you can see, 
there's only two things and two persons are being compared. The third kind of comparison is superlative. Superlative is used to compare three or more things usually in combination with that. Example, she is the tallest of them all. She is compared to all. Another example, my house is the largest one in our neighborhood. So my house is compared to our neighborhood. As you can see here in our example, there are three or more compared. And it is a group compared. Unfortunately, this comparison form of adjective are more difficult aspect of English. Why? Because they change according to how many syllables there are in the word, and according to which the letter the word ends with. But don't worry, here are the rules that will help you. First rule, one syllable. If the adjective is one syllable that end in consonant, we add er for comparative and est for superlative. Like for example, the word clear. For comparative, clearer. For superlative, clearest. Another example, the word dark. For comparative, darker. And for superlative, darkest. Second rule. And one syllable ending with E. If the adjective end in E, we only add R for comparative and ST for superlative. Like for example, the word wise. For comparative, wiser. For superlative, wisest. Another example, the word simple. For, for comparative, simpler. And for superlative, simplest. The third rule, adjectives ending with one vowel. When the adjective word ends a vowel plus consonant, we double the ending consonant and then add er for comparative and est for superlative. Like for example, the word thin for comparative thinner and for superlative thinnest. Another example, the word fat for comparative fatter and for superlative, fattest. Fourth rule. Two syllables ending in Y. When the adjective end in consonant plus Y, we drop Y and add IER for comparative and IEST for superlative. Like for example, the word busy. For comparative, busier. And for superlative, busiest. Another example, the word merry. For comparative, merrier. And for superlative, merriest. The fifth rule, three or more syllables. If the adjective is long, we add more for comparative and most for superlative before the adjective. Like for example, the word creative. For comparative, more creative. And for superlative, most creative. Another example, the word popular. For comparative, more popular. And for superlative, most popular. The sixth rule, irregular adjectives. This is a word that describes or modifies a noun or pronoun, but does not have a simple comparative or superlative form. Like for example, the word good. For comparative form, it becomes better. For superlative form, it becomes best. Another example, the word bad. For comparative, it becomes worse. And for superlative, it becomes First, now let's go to the common errors that contravene the correct use of degrees of comparison. The first error is using the comparative instead of the superlative. Like for example, 
He is the happier person I know. It is incorrect because in the sentence, he is compared to all the person I know. And happier is a comparative. So, it must be superlative. So, the correct form is, he is the happiest person I know. The second error is doubling up comparison of superlative. Example, his car is more faster than mine. It is incorrect because as we discussed earlier, our rules in forming one or two syllables that end in consonant, we just add ER for comparative. So the correct form is his car is faster than mine. The third error, using empty comparison. Example, the line moved more slowly. It is incorrect because there is no comparison. Because as we discussed earlier, that the comparative comparison are usually form a combination of than. So the correct form is the line moves more slowly than the line next to it. The fourth errors using ambiguous comparison. Like for example, she liked pizza better than her husband. It is incorrect because it has a unclear meaning because you might interpret the sentence that pizza is better than her husband, right? So remember that we don't compare person to things. So the correct comparative is she likes pizza better than her husband does. The fifth error is missing the article the in the superlative. Like for example, the youngest girl was always also littlest. It is incorrect because in comparative form we use the the compared to all more things. So the correct form is the youngest girl was also the Look list. So that's all my report. Thank you for listening.